that uh, weren't able to be with us last week that we're going to recognize here before we get going. But let's pray, and uh, then we'll get going here, okay? <laughs> Y'all pray with me. Father, we thank you for this day. Jesus, we thank you for allowing each and every one of us to gather up here this morning. Father, we thank you for the, for the rain that you've sent many of us last night. Father, we thank you for the rain that you're going you're gonna to bless each and every one of us with this week. And Father, as we gather up here this morning, Lord, first and foremost, we just pray, God, that, that everything that takes place here, Lord, that it's about you. Lord, that, uh, Lord, that it leads people to you. Father, I, man, I pray that our worship is pleasing to you this morning. And Father, I pray, Lord, that as the word is open, that the word is proclaimed. Father, I pray that that word does not fall on deaf ears. Jesus, we pray for your protection here this morning. And Jesus, we pray for your forgiveness. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, before we go any further, before we go any further, we've got, uh, we've got a few more graduates that, uh, like I said, that weren't, they weren't able to be here with us last week, but they're here with us this morning. And uh, we, we want to go ahead and acknowledge them and recognize them for their, for their accomplishments that, uh, man, that they, they have been blessed to accomplish. And our first one's going to be Mr. Colton Moore. Come on up, Colton. All right, Colton. You got five minutes, okay? Oh boy. <laughs> hey, tell, tell everybody. Tell everybody what you're going to be doing. Where, what, what's next for Colton? I'm uh, going to go be attending MCC for paramedic school. There you go. There you go. Stand right over here, buddy. All right, our next one is Desiree Sanders. <laughs> Graduating from Heiko, Texas. All right, you got 15 minutes. No. All right, what's, what, what's next for you, young lady? I'm going to Ranger to be a nurse. Ah. You know, I'm starting to see a pattern. You know, maybe they think some of us are getting older and they need to take care of us. All right? I'm cool with that. All right, this next one, this is another special one here. Uh, they're all special. Make no mistake about it. They're all special. Uh, but this one has just finished up at Oklahoma State University. All right? All right, Miss Brianna Barker. Come on up. You, you got out of Oklahoma as fast as you could, didn't you? Huh? You know why there's always a north wind in Oklahoma? Because OU sucks. <laughs> I'm kidding. Boomer sooner, man. Some of them will catch you later. All right. All right. Hey, now. Hey, now. Graduated. Got your college degree. Was, got two of them. Two bachelors. A bachelor's and a master's. Two bachelors. Two, all right. What's next for you? Hopefully getting a job. <laughs> Biden's going to pay off those student debts. Don't worry about it. All right. No, 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 no. Hey, y'all join me. Let's pray for them and uh, praise God for what he's done. And, uh, uh, man, let's, uh, let's ask God to bless them as, uh, man, as their journey's fixing to continue. And then I'm going to get out of your way here. Father, we thank you for, uh, man, for these graduates. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in their lives. Father, we thank you for this chapter. Uh, Lord, we know that you have great things in store for each and every one of them. Uh, Father, whether they're continuing their education, Lord, whether they're, man, whether they finish that and looking for a job, Father, we just pray your blessings upon them. Father, we pray, Lord, that, uh, man, that they would seek you above everything else. And, Lord, we pray that you would guide them to the, man, to the place that you have for them. Father, we love you. We praise you. And, Jesus, we ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Are y'all ready to worship this morning? All right. Well, hey, I'm going to step out of here. Kiddos, kiddos, don't forget. Oh, that was wrong. Kiddos, don't forget. You're going to stay in here today. All right. Uh, no kids corral or anything back there this morning, so you're going to stay in here after announcements. Uh, just keep, uh, keep your seat uh, because you're not going to be going anywhere. All right? Are y'all ready? Yeah. Oh, come on now. Come on. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Y'all get it.
I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented time guest, I would like to welcome you. We are glad to have you joining us this morning. 
Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, we have uh, a family play date coming up uh, this coming Saturday, May 28th. Uh, starts at 9.30 a.m. And we'll, there will be a 4-D open barrel race following right after. And the expeditions are starting at 2 p.m. So if you would like uh, some more info on that, there's flyers at each of the offering tables, so grab one of those. Uh, just another little reminder, uh, is today the last Sunday that the elder forms are out? Uh, if you've been praying and that it's uh, you have someone that God's laid on your heart for the elder uh, nomination forms, be sure to grab one of those and fill those out today. Uh, today is the last day for those. Uh, there's no children's church today, so kiddos, be sure to stay in here. A little announcement uh, for the kiddos. Uh, be sure to be selling your raffle tickets for the upcoming camps. And uh, be sure that if you've already sold some and you need more tickets, turn in what you got and get a few more. So be sure to get with Laura on that. And uh, another announcement is if you haven't uh, put anything in this jar right here, this one right here. This one's real pretty, okay? It's a little empty, needs to be a little fuller, okay? Be sure to do that, and you'll get to see Pastor Jimmy slumped, okay? So, uh, with that... Uh, What's the other jar for? Uh, it's for looks. It's just for looks. Yep. So, with that, uh, one other announcement. Uh, Jeff uh, Copenhaver passed away. And uh, his funeral will be tomorrow at the Erath uh, Cowboy Church at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. So uh, if you would like to go to that funeral, it will be there tomorrow. Uh, Jeff Copenhaver, he uh, did devotional books. He wrote one, this one right here called God Wants You to Win. He was a world champion calf roper. So some of you may know him, some of you may not. But his funeral <coughs> is tomorrow at 10.30 at the Erath county cowboy church uh, and with that uh you guys have a 60 second meet and greet and so uh i'll i'll start my timer so if you don't know somebody i see a lot of new faces just get up and get a chance to say hi tell them good morning and enjoy so enjoy your 60 seconds of freedom real quick so have at it your way back to your seats. All right, I hope everybody got the chance to say good morning to someone and uh, just get the chance to move around a little bit. If y'all would uh, just join me in prayer, I'll, I'll pray us out real quick and then we'll continue back to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for the blessings that you have in store. Lord, I just thank you for uh, bringing us this uh, guest today and his little helper. Lord, I just pray that uh, you speak through Billy Jack and you allow your words to be spoken through him, Lord. 
And I just ask that you allow each and every one of us in here today to have an open mind and open heart for what you have to bring for us today, Lord. And just for us to cast out all the distractions and allow your Holy Spirit to move within this place. It's in your Son's name. Amen. <coughs>
As I ponder all the days of my childhood, I see mistakes I made along the way, and I wonder if wrongs could be forgiven. I time. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for the day, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of being able to wake up this morning, the privilege of being able to come here and hear your word. Father, we just pray for Billy Jack this morning as he comes and, and brings a special message that each one of us need to hear. We just pray that we listen with open hearts and open minds. Father, we just uh, thank you for the many blessings and ask that you forgive us of our many sins. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to, man, I'm going to take just uh, just one second here, and I want to introduce this guy. Uh, you know, here's here's the thing. I've, I've had the pleasure of knowing uh, Billy Jack for, uh, man, I guess for about two years now. I uh, first met him, uh, man, up there in uh, in Colorado on a pack trip. Didn't know who this big, burly, red beard man, Grizzly Adams was. Uh, but uh, here's here's the thing that I, that I learned about him. Uh, this guy's got a heart. For sharing the gospel okay uh, he's got a heart for telling people about Jesus okay uh, so as uh, man as he comes uh, as he shares with us today as he uses a zebra to do that uh, man I encourage you guys to to listen uh, not listen to him but listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you uh, and listen to what God has in store for each and every one of you. So it's my pleasure, uh, Mr. Billy Jack Sprayberry. Hey, 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 is it on? Hello, hello. Maybe, maybe. There we go, there we go, there we go. There we go. Well, it's good to see a lot of y'all again. I want to thank y'all for 
allowed me to come back out and kind of pick up on where I where I left off on my on the testimony that I come and shared back in September is kind of sort of what we're going to do. Uh, for the ones that were here last time and for the ones that didn't or wasn't here back in September when I come to share my testimony, uh, it, it's been a pretty neat deal since September. I left off talking about where we got a signal if his tail raises, we take him outside, so <laughs> he'll be back. Yeah, because we left some exotic fertilizer in Jasper County Cowboy Church one time, so we don't charge no extra for that. But uh, <clears throat> um, I had shared that, uh, that the Lord had begun to, or I say begin to bless me. I've been started to see the blessings that the Lord was giving me and was starting to realize how to use those blessings once I was ready, mature enough to accept them and uh, start using them as far as the mule rodeo ministries that I had shared that we use mules as a magnet to draw a crowd and then we would share the word of God using mules. And uh, I always thought that it was pretty strange that God would use a mule of all things to be able to share the word. But uh, he, he could use anything that you got, anything that you've got going on in your life, he's going to use. So, uh, so the Lord blessed me again and put me in the right spot at the right time with a guy that was looking to get rid of a bunch of zebras. And I'd been praying and thinking and talking with my wife, and we were wanting a, a zebra. And right spot at the right time, God put us in the right spot. So we wind up with Jasper. This is Jasper. He's eight months old. I've had him since he was two weeks old. We bottle raised him up. And uh, and you hear the stereotypes about zebras being mean and how they kick and they bite, and I'm here to prove that, say that they do. <laughs> he was about this tall when I got him, about 80 pounds, but he felt like Mike Tyson when he'd kick you, I promise you. You got to think, guys, they're not from here fighting dogs and coyotes. They're raised to fight lions, even the little ones. So I was sharing with some guys outside. Horses and mules would kick you typically one time, just enough to make you stumble so that they can run off. That's their defense. They're going to they're gonna flee. They're going to kick you and run. Zebras don't do that. Zebras kick backing up so that they can kick you again and again and again. Because there again, it's survival of the fittest over there with the lions. Either they going to die or the lion's going to die. So I'm going to keep kicking you until one of us quits moving, right? So <clears throat> let me pray for us. Let me calm me down. Let, uh, I just want to talk to the Lord real quick. Lord, we just want to thank you for this day. Lord, we want to thank you for your many blessings and all that you give us, Lord. We just want to thank you for this time of fellowship. And, Lord, for the safety in this country, Lord, we just want to thank you for the ability to be able to come and share your word. And, Lord, just be able to love on each other as you have loved on us. Lord, I just pray that you get me out of the way and that you speak through me, Lord, and that we can use Jasper as a magnet to share your word and grow your kingdom. Lord, it's all about you, and I want to glorify you with every word that we say. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. So like I said, when we got him, guys, <clears throat> we brought him home, and uh, he was wild. He was about two weeks old, and he was running on 3,500-acre Black Angus Cattle Ranch down in Jasper. That's how we got his name, Jasper. We won't, didn't want to forget where we got him from. It's just that simple. Some folks thought that we named him Jasper out of the stone in the Bible, but I ain't even that smart. So, But uh, he was pretty wild, bouncing off that trailer, coming home. Like I showed you how tall he was, he was touching the roof on that old stock trailer. They're so wiry and bouncy and really hateful and mean. I was scared to get him out of the trailer for the first three or four or five days he lived in my stock trailer because I was afraid if I put him out that he ain't no telling what county or state or Mexico he'd wind up in. So, but, uh, so I got, finally got him out after a couple days and put him in a stall, an eight by 10, eight foot tall stall. 
And, uh, and I'd go out there every morning and just sit with him for an hour before work and just talk with him and verbally out loud pray and just talk to Jesus and just tell him, you know, God, I'm so excited. I feel like a little kid. You know, there's a zebra in the barn. You know, how cool is that, right? And I'd be all giddy and stuff. And I'd get home in the evenings, and before I'd ever go in the house, I'd go straight to the barn, and I'd sit out there with him for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, whatever, and just be there, be present with him. Just let him know I'm going to sit on my stool. You can do your zebra stuff and whatever. Just keep the punches, you know, to a minimum. But that's what we got into a routine of for about another two weeks. I'd just go out there and just talk to him, and we'd pray every evening, every morning. So <clears throat> we'd had him for about two weeks. And uh, one Sunday after church, we had a roping or a play day or something. I don't remember what it was, but I was staying back to help him work, and I'd been there all day. Six, seven o'clock, I get home, and <clears throat> I pull up. Jennifer meets me out on the porch and said, hey, supper's ready. I said, hold on, I got to go spend at least 15, 20 minutes with Jasper, and I'll be in. I'm, I'm dog tired. I said, I'll be in, but let me go spend a little bit of time with Jasper. And I walked out there, and I went to go into his stall, and I turned around to latch the gate, and that sucker cow kicks me with both back feet. It brightened my hip. Oh, you know, and you ball up your fist, and those of you that was back here in September, I wasn't real nice to a bunch of animals before, and I'm trying to learn to can keep that in check and this and that, but he did it, and, oh, it was bad. So I just sat down on my stool and kind of went to talking to him a little bit, and he run around to this side, and I go to flinch and deflect it, and he kicked me again on this side, both back feet. I wasn't very Christian-like and said a couple words that I probably shouldn't have about zebras in Africa. And <clears throat> so I got up. I, was, I got to thinking, you know, if that sucker knew what I'd been through today, you know, it's been a long day. We got up early and this and that and been at church, and it was a great day. And these play days, having to deal with these barrel racers and... Or if we was at a roping, having to deal with them ropers, you know, just what, whichever it is. They're about the same kind of deal, but <laughs> so, uh, but, but then I got to thinking, the Lord showed me, well, I don't know what kind of day he's had. He's been in an 8 by 12 box all day. You know, he wasn't happy to be in there either. He was just defending himself with some strange creature coming into his box. <clears throat> so as I go to turn and lock the gate, and I'm hurting on both sides now, I'm tired and wore out, and I flip out my lights and I go to walking through the yard. It's a pretty good walk from my barn to the house in the dark. And I just go to pray and verbally out loud, mad. I say, God, this is your zebra. God, I am so blessed to have him. I want to thank you so much for allowing for you. <laughs> for you entrusted me with him. Mm, what a blessing. I said, but <clears throat> I said, Lord, this sucker's wearing me out. Two weeks he's been biting and kicking me, and all I've done is love on him. I said, Lord, I want to thank you again for, for your zebra. I said, but you need to tell your zebra that I'm one of the good guys. <laughs> you need to have a talk with your zebra. I said, God. What a blessing. I'm so excited as a kid to have him. And I'm just, oh, I'm, amen. And I walk in the house, and I eat my supper, and I take me a shower, and I go to bed, and I walk, wake up the next morning <clears throat> and kind of hobble out there with both hips the way that they were with his bottle. And I go to sit down, or I come in, and I go to lock the gate, and I could feel something pulling on me. And I go to flinch like he's fixing to kick me. I go to look, and he's actually done grabbed my shirt. So with this hand, as I'm locking the gate, I'm waiting. If he bites my donut roll, I'm fixing to give him a donut hole when I'm finna give him. So I'm, I'm, I latch the gate, and he has got my shirt. I'm like, what the heck is that crazy sucker doing? And uh, with this hand, as I'm waiting on him, I use this hand to go to touch him. 
for the first time that he let me touch him and go to petting on him, petting on him. Well, when he realizes that I'm petting him, he kind of runs off, and I'm like, okay, well, that's the same old Jasper. Okay, nothing different. Well, I go to sit down, and he comes around, wheels around this way, all kind of in a fright. And I do like I do. Well, when I do that, I kind of sit there for a second. He grabs this side of the shirt. What is he doing? He done left a wet spot over here chewing on my shirt. Well, I go to look, and he's nursing on my shirt. He had done grabbed my shirt and wadded it up, and he's nursing on my shirt. So I reach over him, and I go to petting on him. Guys, the coolest thing happened in the middle of the night, and I'm here to tell you that there's no training. There's no... I've been raising horses and mules my whole life, breaking and riding mules a lot of, and some horses, but there's no training that Billy Jack had done that calmed this zebra down the way that he is, let him go. There's nothing, I cannot take any credit in this. I truly believe from that morning on, he was this tame. Any of you who've raised horses and mules know that it don't take, it's not that quick. It takes months. There's some mules out there that's taken years to get this, this tame. I've got a mule we've had seven or eight years, and she still ain't this tame. But she's a good one. I'm going to give her that. Guys, I truly believe that God talked to Jasper and said, Hey, that's it. We're fitting to go to work. we got a ministry. we got people to talk to. I truly believe that. And so everyone knows Philippians 4, 6. I don't have it wrote down. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything, right? That's what you've got to verbally put your prayers out there, guys. The things that you're near and dear to your heart, you've got to pray for them. <clears throat> um, Matthew 5, 16, 15, and 16, where it talks about the light. Uh, nope, I'm in the wrong spot already. Hold on. So... Just being able to love on Jasper, even though that he was kicking and biting me, no matter what, you know, I did. We've got to do that as Christians the same way with the world, guys, when we go out into the world. We're called to just love one another as God has loved us, right? They're not going to agree with everything we say. We're not going to agree with everything that they say. But to bicker back and forth and argue with them and this and that, that's not what we're called to do. If... When Jasper bit and kicked me, if I'd have took the wrong end of a lead rope and went back at him, this wouldn't have been the end result that you got. I've been that guy before, and I've shared it here when I was here last time, that I had some Christianese folks come up to me before I was Christian, and I didn't like it at all. But they loved on me, and I fought back. I fought with my Christian wife before I was and told her how silly it was and stupid it was that she would go and pray and talk to the wind and whatever she did. I was that guy and I've shared that here. <clears throat> but you just continue to love on them. My wife continued to pray for me and my friends and stuff continued to pray for me. And that's what you wind up with. I guarantee you I'd never thought I'd been standing in a church with a zebra telling people about Jesus. So just continue to love on each other for sure. So Matthew 5, 15, 16, it says, No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is a plate. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all those to see that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. That's our goal with Jasper, is to use him as a light, to use him as a magnet, to attract people, let people touch him and love on him, and take pictures with him. But then while we have you magnetized to him, we're going to share the word with you. We're going we're gonna to grow the kingdom and tell people about Jesus, right? So that's our goal, is to, to put him up on a light stand and let folks see him. 
But you got to be willing to share the word with it too. You got to be willing to tell people about Jesus for sure. So, where's all the kiddos at? Raise your hands. I got a couple fun questions I want to ask you. Hey, what do you call a group of cows? Simple question. West Texas. Anybody? A herd. What do you call a group of fish? A school. What about a group of birds? Anybody? A flock, just because I think it's funny. Anybody know what a group of geese are called? A gaggle. Yeah, it took us like 10 minutes in Jasper to figure that one out. <laughs> a gaggle of geese. Yeah. Anybody know what a group of zebras are called? And it's not going to be as simple as a herd. I thought it was a herd. It ain't a herd. Anybody know? Did I hear it? No. They're called a dazzle of zebras. D-A-Z-Z-L-E, a dazzle of zebras. Now, you got to think on the globe where Africa is. It's really close to Europe, and it's probably some kind of European thing. You know, they're kind of strange anyway, so. <laughs> a dazzle of zebras, yeah. So when we got Jasper, I didn't know a whole lot about zebras. I've done some research and some digging on them. But the cool thing, I found out several neat things about them. I'm going to tell a few stories that the, what the Lord has showed me since we've had him is that uh, so I got to just praying and asking and, and researching and digging why are there black and white animals in a green and brown world in Africa right I don't camouflage very well Lord why would you build such a beautiful creature and not put him in Alaska or something you know somewhere where it's white and he can somewhat blend? why would you put him in a green and brown world right it doesn't make sense at all. But the obvious answer that I get from a lot of people is, is that they're black and white so that when they run, they distort the vision of the predators and this and that. And that's somewhat true from what I've read, what I've found out. So that when they're startled and they run, it looks like one continuous black and white streak, like the Twilight Zone type deal, right? And the predator don't know where to hit. So when one zebra strikes out, the next zebra will put its shoulder at this one's hip and therefore and so long so that there's no break, there's no daylight shining. We've all seen those geographical movies where zebras are running and that lion's crouched down and they're just running. And he's 10 feet, he's this close to them, he could just pounce. Why doesn't he pounce on them? He's waiting on that light. He's waiting on that daylight to see the weakest one. When one starts to slow down, they create a gap, right? You see what I'm saying? So that's what that lion is waiting for is the gap. That shows, oh, that one's weak because he can't keep up with the faster ones. The really neat thing that I found out about zebras are is that when the front one feels that the back one is slowing down and getting tired, the front one will slow down to keep that light from breaking through them. Well, then that front one in front of him will slow down and slow down and slow down. So they're only going to run as fast as the slowest one. We've all heard about the weak link breaks the chain and whatever. Zebras were designed, they've got it in their head that same way that they would rather save, they would rather run a little bit slower and save the whole herd than me. Like if me and you are out and there's some bears, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just got to outrun you, right? <laughs> Zebras don't think that way. They don't go, I'm out. They would rather save the whole herd by running slower, and it works. They can run slower, and that lion will not attack them because they all look strong and fit, right? 1 Thessalonians says, Cur encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. That's what zebras do. When they see that that predator is coming, they strike out and run, and instead of being one, running off and leaving the herd, I'm out of here, I'm gone, like a lot of us tend to do. The zebras aren't that away. And we're called as Christians to do that same thing. We're called as Christians that same way. If we're out sharing the word and we're saving souls and we're talking to people and we're touching people, that's great. But if we're not calling and checking on our brethren that, man, he just didn't act the same way Wednesday night. There's something wrong with AXY zebra, right? We've got to be accountable. We've got to encourage each other on and build each other up. 
Love one another as God loves us. We're encouraged to do that same thing. And we can learn this from zebras of all people. We don't have to fight lions. We have our own devils to fight. But if the zebras are willing to slow down to save one zebra, we can slow down to save other Christians. If we're losing Christians to the devil, two or three, what good is it to be to me over here saving two to three? We're not winning nothing. We're washing each other out. But if I can call and check on my friend and check on, you know, my fellow, my members at church and still continue to be growing that kingdom, that's what we're talking about. That's where the zebras are showing us what's going on. We're going to save everyone instead of saving me. Right? I just really thought that that was a that's a neat deal it, needs to, it taught me to slow down that it, it ain't worth outrunning the rest of us because sometimes I feel that way my wife and I are really really busy we travel a lot doing a lot of things rodeo and, and with Jasper and, and the boys doing their things and Man, we are, and we have a pet and zoo business and all kinds of stuff with birthday parties, and we are sick and tired of cupcakes. <laughs> but, uh, but you've got to slow down and, and just keep your eye focused. I'm so tunnel vision that what's the next place we're going? Where can God use me? And that's great, guys. What's the next rodeo that we can share mules and and the devotionals. Where can we take Jasper? Where, when's the next devotional that we get to go share? But you've got to be compassionate enough that Mr. Jimmy talked about last Sunday. That compassion for one another. And that's something that I learned last year with a guy that went with us, Mr. Tony, with uh, Brian and Remington and us that all went up there. And I've been working on that a lot because I've been so focused on how can I grow the kingdom instead of their growth isn't growing let's help them out so just keep that in mind so the main deal one of my favorite devotionals little quick stories that I like to tell is about the stripes of the zebras <clears throat> the Lord went to talking to me one morning I'm gonna go back inside the barn where we were with that other one and I'm sitting there one morning and I'm talking to him and he done got lovable on me at that time and God went to put it on my heart said just look at him God I'm sitting in an 8 by or a 10 by 12 stall with a zebra in the barn I guarantee you I'm looking at him right I'm looking how cool is it wake up don't fall asleep <laughs> so <clears throat> Back up a little bit so they can see you. There you go. So God goes to talking to me, and he says, just look at him. I'm like, God, I'm looking, right? I'm looking. And I could hear him again. He said, no, look at him. And I'm sitting down. I actually lean up, and I put my hands on my knees, and I'm like, what you got now? What? Yeah. I'm. He said, no, you're not looking at his stripes. Just look at his stripes. And I go to look. I said, God, I'm looking. Well, God goes to showing me the black and white hairs on this zebra. I go to looking at him, and from far off in the, the zoos and the different things, you would think that them hairs would overlap and there would be some gray areas, right? But these hairs, and he's shedding a little bit now, but it's like they almost repel each other. There's black and white hairs. There is no gray area. These hairs is black and white. And I had a couple people ask me about zebras being black with white stripes or white with black stripes. The cool things about zebras are their skin is black and white striped under their hair. They're to the core black and white. It's really neat. You know with a lot of your paint horses, they're black hair or black skin with black and white hair. But zebras are black and white. So the Lord went to showing me that, that the black and white stripes and how they repel each other. In Matthew 25, 32, it says that when the Lord comes back, for, uh, he's going to gather all of his nations as the shepherd uh, gathers his flock, right? He's going to separate the goats from the sheep. He's going to send the goats to hell and the sheep to heaven, right? Is that what he's talking about? Well, with the stripes, it's the same way. With our salvation, it's the same way. It's black and white. 
Either you are or you ain't. It's that simple. There's no gray area. You would think that those hairs would overlap, but like I said, they don't. Even when they overlap, it's black and white. You might see gray, but there is no gray. There's black and white hairs. That's your only choice. I love that God is a loving God, and he doesn't force us to love him. He loves us even when we don't love him. Been there. Right? That's the... That's the main, I love that about him is that it's, it's our choice either you are or you ain't it's black and white I thought that I lived and I shared this back in September that I lived in the gray area for a long time and that's what I tell my wife is that I'm not saved and I don't know about this whole heaven's gate pearly gate deal meeting some guy and wanting to tell me who I used to be and this and that but I'm a good enough guy that if I see a guy broke down out of gas, I'm going to stop and go get him some gas. That I've lived both sides of it. I'm in that gray area. That if there is a heaven, I've done been a good enough guy that I can get in. But if there ain't, I've lived a good enough life that I've enjoyed it. It's what I used to tell her all the time. But that ain't. That's the devil lie telling you. It's black or white. That's it. It says it in here. Either you are or you ain't. It's your choice. And like I said, I love the fact that he don't force us to. So when we went and got Jasper, he was only 13 days old when I went and picked him up, right at two weeks. We had went a time or two before and tried to catch him and his mama. There were 17 in that dazzle of zebras, 17 zebras. We tried to pin them up with some cows and six foot fences and boy they just like gazelles yeah I mean they are or they wouldn't go in there they are super smart so anyways we had a vet come out we lined up a vet with a trank gun and we shot him and it fell scooped him up put him in the trailer you give him a reverse shot and he wakes up people ask me you know was he orphan did you save him and this and that calm down I stole him from his mama, but look what we're doing. We're telling people about Jesus. It'll be okay. Hey, I bet his mama is very proud of him if she knew what he was going to be doing, right? And that's kind of the weird part. I hate telling people that. And people are like, oh, was he rescued? Did his mama die during birth? I was like, no, she's perfectly healthy down in Jasper, Texas, living a zebra life. But So we did take him from his mama, but it'll be okay. So the cool thing is is that Jasper has been resurrected. Jasper has died to his old life and now lives a new one. Jasper was out doing zebra things, biting and kicking and fighting other zebras and play fighting with his brothers and sisters thinking that there was lions and hyenas and different things. And it took a shot to lay him down and when he woke up he woke up in a new world with a new life and a new purpose <laughs> to love to share and help spread the word of Jesus guys that's what we're called to do most of us have had that resurrection story. I was out running wild and fighting and crazy and fighting them lions that I thought that I was going to be fighting. And it took a shot, a hard shot in the face from a friend of mine that made me realize that that shot in the face was out of love and that I needed to die to that old self that old life and be resurrected and lifted up opened up into a new world to be able to love and to share and to glorify Jesus but you gotta think that if Jesus can use simple things like mules that we've used for a while or zebras to help share the word to draw people and to share the word 
What is it in your life that you could use to share God's word? Whether it's playing football or softball or if you even if you're one of those fishermen guys that want to sit on a metal boat with a string in the water, I don't get it, but uh, a fishing rod and a boat, right? It don't matter what you do, what your things that you do in life, I'm drawing a blank on that, but you get my point. There's things in your life that you can use to glorify God. I promise you, I'd have never thought, just go back five years ago, six years ago, that I'd be using mules to draw people to God, much less a zebra. But there's things in your life that you are passionate about, there we go, that you can use to draw people to God. And I encourage you to use those things. And in every aspect, sharing that word and sharing Jesus with somebody somewhere. There's blessings in everything. You just have to be able to see them and be faithful enough to be bold enough to stand up and share them with someone somewhere. It don't have to be in front of a church. It can be with some friends in school at lunchtime just praying over your meals. It's just following through with that faith. And through that, God will continue to bless you and continue to bless you until one day you too will be kicked by a zebra and then you can use that zebra to go and share the word. I want to thank y'all so much for, uh, for allowing Jasper and I to come and, and hang out and, and get to share him and for him to get to love on y'all. I want to thank y'all. I'm going to pray for y'all and then we're going to go outside and if you want to take your picture or, get to pet Jasper we're going to hang around for a little while I just ask that you kind of form a line or stay back if you crowd him he can, he's still a baby he gets a little nervous we'll pull up one or two at a time we'll take some pictures and love on him I, I'd love for you to love on him but just be patient with us and don't don't crowd him okay Lord we want to thank you again for this day Lord we want to thank you for for the cooler weathers and that this fat old body isn't sweating today Lord we just want to thank you for your many blessings and all that you give us. Lord, we just pray that, uh, Lord, that, that we keep our hearts open and our, and our minds open to receiving you. And, Lord, that we continue to keep our eyes open looking for those blessings and those chances that we get to share your word. Lord, I just pray that uh, everyone here is, Lord, just seeing you through Jasper. And, Lord, that they can go and tell their friends about him, Lord, and that they'll continue to use some of these stories that, that you have shared today through a zebra that you'll be that they'll be able to come and see you Lord we just love you so much and we just thank you for the love that you've poured out on us it's in Jesus name that I pray amen, amen. hey real quick I forgot for all you Facebook folks, we don't have the rest of all that other stuff, but Jasper has his own Facebook page. <laughs> if you want to like his page, it, he has videos from when he was mean and hateful all the way up to the things that we do. It's called Jasper's Journey for Jesus Christ. If you want to go and like his page, and we, we post pictures of his friends playing out in the pastures, and when we go and travel and share God's word and things like that, but Jasper's Journey for Jesus Christ is his page. Thank y'all. Thank you, Billy Jack. Thank you. Yes, sir. Guys, if y'all would, uh, man, Ethan and Jesse, Emily, Bill, if y'all uh, come on up, you want to close us out in a song. Uh, but I am going to share this with you. And you guys, go ahead and stand up with me. Go ahead and stand up with me. Go ahead and stand up with me. I am going to share this with you here. I am going to share this here with you. Um, Romans, uh, in Romans chapter 10, beginning in verse 9 it says if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is by believing it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved as the scriptures tell us anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect they have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him for everyone 
who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I share that here with you after that uh, for, for this very reason right here. Because I know, I know, there's somebody in here, there's somebody watching that you're, you're doubting. You're doubting. You've told yourself that, man, you've done too many bad things in your life. You've told yourself that you've kicked too many people, you've cussed too many people. You've, done, you've got so much baggage back there that there's no way, no way that, that, that God could love you. And, folks, I'm, I'm standing up here today to tell you that that is a lie from the depths of hell, okay? That is a lie from the depths of hell. It, it, it does not matter what you've done. It does not matter how. It does not. I don't. I don't care how drunk you were last night. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care how many times you've been married. I don't care. I, I man. I, I. I. don't care about any of that stuff. What I care about is that you know, folks. I'm gonna tell you something. I, when when Billy Jack says that God spoke to that zebra, I'm gonna tell you right now. He spoke to that zebra, and if God can speak to that zebra, He can speak into your life, and He will save you today if you will call on Him. Amen. Amen. If you have never given your life to Jesus. If you've never given your life to Jesus, we're going to close this out in a word of prayer. And uh, the guy, they, man, they're going to close us out in a song here. But if you've never given your life to Jesus, this time right here, this is for you. Y'all pray with me. Father, we come to you right now. And, Lord, I thank you for the challenge that we heard this morning. Father, I thank you for, uh, Lord, for I, I, God, I thank you for using Billy Jack. Lord, I thank you for, uh, man, I thank you for him being willing. Uh, Lord, being bold enough to step out in faith. You know, even though he might not have understood it at the time. But, uh, Lord, I thank you for showing him and for leading him. And, Father, I thank you for, uh, man, for placing it on his heart to come and share with us today. Now, Father, right now, right now, Lord, maybe they're listening, maybe they're watching, maybe they're, maybe they're in this building right now. And, Father, maybe they think that there is no way, there is no way that you could love them enough to save them. Well, Father, I'm, God, I'm going to stand on your word. I'm going to stand on Romans 10, 13. That says, for everyone who, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, Father, I, man, I take that. I take that and I believe that. So, folks, if that's you, if that's you who think, who think that you've done too many bad things, Lord, that, that if, if you think that there's no way Jesus could, could save you, I'm going to challenge you to hear God's word, listen to it, and believe it. This prayer right here is for you. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Jesus, I know you died on that cross for my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, I ask you to save me. Father, if they had the courage to call out to you right there, then, Father, I pray you give them the courage to make it known, to tell somebody. Lord, to make that public profession of faith and follow through in believer's baptism. Jesus, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Most importantly, we thank you for the blood that was shed for each and every one of us. Father, we love you and we praise you. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all have got another surprise coming next Sunday. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to miss it, okay? You don't want to miss it. You want to be here next Sunday. I'm not going to spoil it for him. I'm not going to spoil it for him. But, but you've got a great surprise that you do not want to miss out on next Sunday, all right? God bless you guys. Y'all have a great week.